Welcome to Level Up Tribes. Level Up Tribes provides resources to help you attain the necessary resources to level up your mind, body, and soul and realize your full potential. It is about exploring, learning, providing you with the tools from the experts for you to create a better version of yourself. I am your host, Agnes Goodwine, and welcome tribes. Welcome to Level Up Tribe Podcast. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So like, it's interesting, you know, God is good and the universe is always good because Last year, I did a um, herbal certification class. My heart has always been called to this, but I've never really explored it. My husband and I went to a farmer's market maybe about three weeks ago. And there were people, you know, selling the sprays. And and I'm a yoga teacher, so I like to buy the sprays, yeah. you know, to, for my practice. And so I was like, you know, I need to just stop and just create my own. Uh I I just don't know where to start. And so anyway, so I have all these books, I have all this material and I haven't started yet. And so then this week on Monday, I said, oh my God, I got to get ready for my guest on Friday. And so I searched you and I'm like, (laughs) yes, oh my God, what you have done amazing work. I mean, you've been doing this for, it has it been like 15 years, 15, 20 like over 20. Yeah. And your work is beautiful. Oh, thank you. It's beautiful because from reading and watching some of the, your videos that you have on YouTube, people sell products all the time, but is the meaning behind selling a product, right? The, the, the foundation of it. And you connect the customer, the client with a flower in such a deeper level when it comes to emotions, where you want to go in life, like it it goes deep. And I, and that is what is unique and authentic about you. And so with that being said, I'm just honored to just have you here. And just knowing that you're just around the corner from me, it's just amazing. And so please introduce yourself to our our platform at Level of Choice podcast. Um, Today we have Katie West and she is the flower alchemist of Lotus Way. And yes, take it away. Thank you so much, Agnes. I'm really happy to be here. And um, I know when I started 20 years ago, it was a little bit of an uphill battle. I'm so grateful that we're in a, it's like we're in a different place, right? When I first came to the U.S., I was like, I'm going to devote the rest of my life to this and it's going to be amazing. (laughs) But that was like before meditation was cool, before yoga was cool. Um, So I remember here and thinking like, oh, people haven't heard of them. That's so strange. Like I was just living in Mexico and even the taxi drivers knew what flower essences were or how they were different from essential oils. Yes. Um, So, and then I, I started doing research and I was like, oh, the way that Americans deal with stress is through taking pills. Like, you know, we've got all our kids on ADHD medications and antidepressants for adults. And so it's been a real joy for me over the last 20 years to, you know, do for the first decade, I did individual consults. And then the second decade was like figuring out how to be an entrepreneur and make things that people would like. Um, And it's been, it's been such a pleasure to see how, Um, we've opened a lot of people's eyes to the fact that there's, you know, an apothecary right here around us and mother earth, and that it can be natural. It can be easy without side effects and that there's more support for us than we could imagine. I want you to tell us about the seven-year-old. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. So I'm an only child and I moved around a lot as a kid, Um, mostly lived in small towns and you know, I just remember in this particular moment being seven, I was living in the Upper Peninsula on Highway US 2, which means like out in the middle of nowhere, um, <laughs> like a frame house on Lake Michigan. And I was the only kid. We literally had like two neighbors and that was it. And I just like played around the trees and the flowers. And I, I remember getting to this point where I was like, I'm clearly not supposed to be here. I, I know mm. I have something to do. I know I'm supposed to connect with a group of people and do something big. I have a big project to work on. And I was just so damn frustrated that like I was stuck in the small body in the small town. And like, 
nothing but sand and lake and trees. <laughs> um, so I would, you know, I had heard about astral projection and I used that. I tried to do that every night before I went to bed to try to like get me to where I needed to be. Um, but that never really worked. So I had to wait, you know, 14 or 15 more years in order to, to really figure out what that project was. And so how did you meet Pedro Lopez Clemente? Wow, you really did your research. <laughs> um, I was living in Querétaro, Mexico, and it was a holiday. I was doing volunteer work full time. And then in my free time, I was studying all forms of natural medicine that I could get my hands on because of that kind of spiritual longing, I guess you could call it, and wanting to help people reach their full potential. So I was walking down this cobblestone road and there was nobody around. It was a holiday. And this little indigenous lady with, you know, braids tied with ribbons handed me a flyer. And I thought, oh, that's weird. Like there's no one else. On, why would she be handing out flyers on a day when there's no one else on the street? So I took the flyer and then I looked and read it. And I was like, wait, this is actually something I'm interested in. <laughs> there's going to be, a, you know, this man coming from Spain to Mexico City teaching about flower remedies wow, this is so cool. So I turned around and the lady was gone. It was like, she, you know, dropped down and then vanished. So I like ran in my flip-flops, like up and down several streets looking for her. And I could never find her because I wanted to ask her more, you know? And I just thought, whoa, that's really weird. I have to go to this course. And um, eventually I traveled to Mexico city, which was three hours from where I was living. And I met Pedro Lopez Clemente from Spain. He was an expert. And he is like instant, oh, this is what I'll do for the rest of my life. He said, if we could get 3% of the world's population actively working with these types of remedies, it would create enough of a positive ripple effect that it would change the outcome of the future of our planet. And that to me felt like something I could do for the rest of my life. And, and just this idea that you know there are 40,000 flowering species on the planet and that each one has a really specific benefit for us. It just was so mind blowing. So that's how I met Pedro and um, eventually, you know, brought the work back to the U.S. That's amazing. I love that. Just the fact that you were seven years old and you had this connection already. How is your ancestry? Did you have anyone um, in your um, ancestry that was so connected to plants and flowers that you mm -hmm. know of? I mean, my mom was, my mom's an avid gardener. She has like every green finger and thumb. I I don't have that quality. She's got the, like, she can pinch the flower, you know, pinch the leaves and like dig the root and, and they just like, ah, oh, like swim they just love her. And so she would always have these really beautiful gardens and she would teach me plant names as we were walking through the woods. She was a forester. So I think she was the one who really instilled in me this like deep love of nature um, and then I just kind of converted it to my own type of medicine, which is more like fiery and more like, you know, creating remedies rather than growing. Yes. How long did it take you? So you had this big journey because I always think like our purpose is already written for us. You just have to do the work to find it, but it's already kind of there. But for you, it just seems like you just mentioned that lady that gave you the flyer. It's like you had these what I call earth angels, like poking you and giving giving you that nudge to say, this is your path. This is what you're meant to be to be doing. Has your path from 20 years ago from meeting um, Pedro, has it been easy? You know, has it been a smooth ride in finding yourself, your product, your tribe? How has that been for you? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's everything all wrapped in one, right? You know, there's, there's, mm -hmm. beauty, there's struggle and like, how you let, how you leveled up, you know, this is level up. Prime. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to know the dirt, like, you know, cause I think sometimes it helps to know the dirt. I remember a time where I was putting groceries on credit cards because I didn't have enough clients. So there was that kind of struggle. I remember going to networking meetings and having to do my elevator pitch, which sucked. And, you know, people were like, you do what with the energy of flowers? Like, oh, you know, she's crazy. Um, so it took me a while to like change my language around how I sp spoke about it so that people would understand and take it seriously. Okay. Um, working with individuals was incredibly 
uh, like precious, you know, it's yeah. really precious when someone trusts you with their heart and their yeah. heart ache. Mm-hmm. That part was really inspiring and beautiful to me. Oh, and then seeing people in a period of like three weeks, their whole face changing, their body language, their story. I mean, it got to a point where I was like, I have to get this to more people. I cannot just have these one-on-one meetings that rely on number of hours in a day because I must get this to to everyone. And then of course, you know, there's the other challenge, which is like, okay, cool. I'll transition from service to product. And then like, you know, we all, we all go, if you don't have entrepreneurial genes, you'll go through that. Like, Oh, I hate selling. I don't want to sell. I don't want to be too pushy. I don't want to ask for money. I don't you know, how am I going to reach my people? Oh, how do I do accounting? Geez, I should really figure out what's selling, you know, like so many things about entrepreneurialism, like where's my people? Oh, now I'm going to spa trade shows, but I don't wear pantyhose and high heels and get drunk in the bar at night. So like, I'm not quite fitting in. How do I get the sale? You know, it's like, so there's so many things I could share, you know, about challenges and struggle, but also so much beauty and miracles and signs and, um, and, and most of all, just seeing the impact of it. It's like, there's nothing that moves me more than hearing a story from a customer who I don't even know on the other yeah. part of the world say yeah. like, this completely changed my life or someone yeah. that, I, you know. And so I want to switch it to um, the healing of flowers. Mm-hmm. If you can talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, these, these essences have been around for a really long time. We tend to think of it as something new because it's kind of new to us, but they've been around for thousands of years. You know, the Aborigines in Australia and Central America in Africa, Europe, yeah. Asia, everywhere, um, you know, shamans and medicine men and um, doctors were prescribing their patients to go out into the wild and drink the dew drops from the tops of flowers. So it's like dew drops was in the dew drop, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and then we see studies in the UK that show that bees are not drawn to flowers based on color or scent, like we think. They're drawn based on electrical impulses that the flower is emitting that are invisible, mm-hmm. but the bees can feel them on the little hairs on their legs. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's this really dynamic communication occurring. And, you know, if that, so like in my mind, I think of nature as like, kind of like the avatar movie it's like floral oh, I love that movie yes and that's really like what's happening if we could see it and when people are like oh, okay she's gone off the deep end I just like take out my cell phone and say like how actually does your cell phone work if someone were to tell you Agnes guess what when you're older you're gonna have this little box in your pocket and it's gonna in- emit invisible waves and on those waves like a magic carpet You can send, you know, photos and videos in your podcast, et cetera. Like you would have been like, what? Yeah. Yeah. I will say you cray cray. (laughs) Right. So, I mean, if we've done that technology in the last, you know, even just in our lifetime, Mm -hmm. is it possible that mother earth has had that technology somewhere along the 4.5 billion years of her, you know? And then if you want to look at studies in Tokyo, where they really value the practice of forest bathing, they certify 44 specific like national forests for the practice of forest bathing, because they've shown in the medical studies that being in nature is not just about oxygen, that there is that like exchange of energy information, life force, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, That it dramatically reduces cortisol, adrenaline. So it's dropping our stress and it's increasing our white blood cell count. So it's boosting our immune system. But the super mind blowing thing about it, which is the quality that I most love about nature is that exponential. So like, you know, we tend to think very linear and like tit for tat, you know, I'll give you this, you give me this, you know, and, and mother nature is so not that way. If you spend one day in nature, your body will retain those beneficial effects for a week. Mm. And if you spend two whole days in, in out in the wild, those positive effects on your system will last an entire month. So it's not like one plus one is two. It's this really exponential. And that's kind of the basis of flower essences and how they work, because the more dilute they are, the more powerful they are, which is Mm -hmm. so confusing, even 
for this day, but it's this great reflection of just the exponentiality of kind of the magic of our universe that we live in. Yes, absolutely. It's interesting you use that because in 2020, when people really couldn't go outside, people started getting like depressed and anxious, right? They needed that energy that, um, what did you call it? Life force. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We put, um, we like created a jungle in our office in 2020. We just bought all these jungle tropical plants, put grow lights and um, it makes such a difference to have plants around, even in your space or just to go outside and sit under a tree. There's, yeah, it's like your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> what was your uh, moment in 2020? Like what did the pandemic teach you? Um, and not just you, your business, like ha- have you pivoted? Mm, that's a really oh. good question. Well, I have a very rebellious nature. So oh, I like it. Um, <laughs> prefacing with that but when everything kind of first hit I just like decided we are essential no one is going to tell me that I'm not essential period so that kind of um I was taking a stand for the team that I lead and saying we're going to keep coming to the office we're going to keep working we're going to keep shipping out flower essences if people are stressed they're going to need them more than ever now so this is not a time to be like sitting on our butts we are essential. Um, so I, I felt that kind of level of strength and empowerment and a ability to do something um, versus like sit on my hands, you know? And yes. then in a, in a business perspective, I guess what it, the effect of it was that it really had us valuing what we do. So like, how to explain? It's like, you know, when you find yourself in business kind of like reaching out, looking, um, I don't know how to describe it. And everything just like whoop, came back inside. Yes. And we yes. could really see the value of what we had. We started doing online education for like platforms so that okay. we could teach more people and expand more. And honestly, I started looking for flowers in March of 2020 on like in the front of our building where we are, this totally wild random flower popped up and bloomed in March. Like it had been growing and our landscaper was like, should I chop this down? I was like, no, 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 no. Like I kind of <laughs> wild stuff. Right. And I kid you not. So it was growing and it was this weird looking thing. And I'd never seen anything like before. We just kept growing. Okay. Let's just leave it. And then in March of 2020, it bloomed. And I looked up the name of the flower and it was crown flower. And that crown flower. Was just like in Spanish it's Corona. And I was like, this is too weird. Right. And then I figured out, you know, the benefits of the were to, were to dissolve fear and dualism and division and like black, white, right, wrong rigidity and like terror, fear, fear of death. So I was like, holy cow, this just bloomed right at the right time. Girl, your spiritual team is on point. (laughs) That's all I got to say. I mean, you value it, right? Other people yeah. would say crazy, but you know, I guess crazy is fun and yeah. helpful yeah. sometimes. I went to your website. Oh my God. It's, it's just lovely. I took the test. What'd you get? So I got the, which is kind of crazy because I, I can be, so I don't know. Well, let me just tell you. So you know how you go in, you take the flower quest test. And so my flower essence in joy juice. Nice. <laughs> and so I found it interesting because I'm very silly like I love to laugh right but then I have my other side who's very like business you know let's get the things done mm-hmm. and so I say interesting because I've been uh, in the last couple of months I've been more on the seriousness of myself mm-hmm. and not on the joy silly childlike Mm-hmm. And so it was interesting that the joy juice picked me <laughs> for it. Yeah. it. And it doesn't mean that you're not joyful. It's just, it actually means the opposite. You're usually drawn to what you are, but just yeah. want, you want more. And sometimes when we get stressed, we like get that serious. Yeah. yeah. It's going to get us through. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and feeling like 
we can get just as much done, but have fun doing it too. I know. So yeah, this was really fun to read. Um, once you take take the test, then you can go to lotusway.com to take the test um, to see what your uh, flower essence is. Um, I wanted to ask you, so you know, you know everything about flower. Is there anything else to learn? Like what, what else is out there for Katie to learn about flower? Or have you already learned everything there is to know? No. Oh my gosh. It's like... <laughs> It's like how they say when you scratch the surface and like the more, you know, the more you realize you don't know. Yeah. It, it honestly, Agnes, it feels like a giant treasure buried underneath the ground that is waiting to be unearthed. And if I tell you that every month I learned something new in the last 20 years and that it just keeps evolving, like my edge this year is teaching other healing practitioners and doctors and such how to use the flower essences and something we just like really kind of hardcore established last week was that, you know, we've, I've always said to help people understand uh, flower remedies are like an acupuncture treatment without the needles. Mm. But last week we had an acupuncturist say, I don't even want to use the needles anymore because these are just as powerful. These are take the place of the needles or are more powerful. Wow. And I'm like, you know, this that's, is, a, that's big. That's huge. I mean, acupuncture has like been around for three to 5,000 years. It's highly respected, uh, especially in Asia. So if you can take the life force of flowers and impact, you know, all the meridian mm -hmm. points of your body to support your organs and your mood, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. And the fact that something's so gentle and simple that you could create this really profound, uh, healing protocol I know that others can share and use is really exciting so yeah and and I think we have 250 flower essences there's 40,000 flowers in the world so mm. I'll never I mean I shouldn't say never but I'm going to do this until the day I die and when I die I'm sure there will be something that I'm still learning right <laughs> yeah we had a woman this morning to uh, email us and say that she's been using this um, sacred body mist on her Alzheimer's and dementia oh. patients that she's caregiving. And she said, she said, I've been doing an experiment. I've been missing them every morning when they wake up and I've been saying, and they'll say like, oh, what is that? And I'll just say it's flowers and love. Oh. And then right before they go to bed, she does the same thing. And over time, she's been doing this experiment and she's finding that um, they're, you know, waking up clearer and happier. They're sleeping longer hours and more rested. So it's the sky's the limit. We're constantly learning. That's a really good question. So let me ask you a dumb question. <laughs> I love I'm all new to this, but I love the smell of roses, mist. If I want to make that do you use dry rose flowers or do you use like real flowers? Okay. So, yeah. So there's two different things going on. One is um, the essential oil or the scent part of it. And then the other part is just the pure life force that doesn't have a scent. If we work with both, uh, I'm, I'm, I specialize in the non-scented part, but we work with essential oils also because it's such a great, amazing, sensuous experience. If you want to make the scent, like if you want to actually distill your own essential oil, you would want to have a really good relationship with a farmer because you'll need 40 roses to distill one drop of oil. Um, so it's like, you know, heavy material. I could never do that because I couldn't grow enough in Arizona. <laughs> but I mean, if you want to make the essential oil, then you would need like distillation equipment, which is out there. You can find like stovetop copper distillery, you know, that you just put right on your stove um, and you can distill your own oils. The part that I specialize in more is the life force part. And that is uh, using a solar infusion process. So in that case, it wouldn't be a store-bought flower, it would be something growing in the wild that's still in the ground. And it's like right at its full bloom point. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, soak the flowers in water, in the sunlight, drives the life force into the water then we add alcohol then we do several dilutions kind of like homeopathy okay. and then we mix you know the two things together if we want it to be like a scented mist okay thank you for sharing that 
I know it's so many kind of technicalities, but it's actually a really simple process. Okay. Um, so you have a big team to help you with all of this. Yeah, we're about 15 people now. Hmm. That's pretty good. Another question that I wanted to ask you, you know, some of us gravitate to certain types of flowers. Like I love the rose. I like the hi- hibiscus. Mm-hmm. I, lo- I love drinking that tea too. Um, and it's the flower of my island of Puerto Rico too. Um, what? It is a Puerto Rico. ¿Tú hablas español? Sí. Ay, qué bueno. Okay. Yo viviendo en México tenía que aprender. <laughs> Ay, qué bueno. I like it. Flowers giving us this energy, right? This connection. So are they also like intuitive? Oh, yeah, 100%. There was a, there was a study, a bunch of studies done by a, a guy at the CIA who taught the lie detector machine, the polygraph machine. He got curious and started hooking up his machine to his office plants. And he found out a whole bunch of crazy information about plants and how intuitive they are. Uh, but his first one initially was he had the machine hooked up to a plant and he had the thought of like, oh, well, I wonder what would happen if I lit a match and lit the leaf on fire. And the moment he had that thought on the machine, it started to register a very high degree of stress. Oh, wow. And then he, he hadn't even lit the match yet. He was just thinking about it. So then he suddenly felt, oh, I can't do that because it's, this is a sentient, there's a sentience here Mm. and, you know, series of experiments showing that, you know, plants could identify the murderer in the room and they form this really special bond with you when you take care of them, that they feel your stress, even if you're, you know, thousands of miles away. For us women, we go through a lot, both with our bodies, emotions, we, we just feel a lot. But for us that are having issues with like our menstrual, and going through pre-menopause, what flowers um, should we, and some of your products that you have that we should be using? So um, one of the superpower flowers for women is pomegranate flower. Mm. And that can oh, do so many things like increase your creativity. But what its main thing that I see is that it cleanses the reproductive system and balances everything. So um, anything from like, past sexual partners that you want to kind of clear out of your system Mm. uh, in a more like expedia sufficient way to balancing your cycles, getting rid of cramps and PMS. Uh, What we've noticed is that if you use it regularly, you know, by your next cycle, it's significantly reduced symptoms or pain or whatever is happening. Okay. And especially for women who are wanting to get pregnant or wanting Mm. to need fertility or wanting to like know what exactly when their peak times are yes. we're not wanting to get pregnant you know there's so many different elements to that story that's a really helpful flower we have it in a blend called radiant energy okay um, and then but it can also i should say if you're premenopausal, it can kind of reverse time a little bit so some women are like no i don't want it because i don't want my period but it'll kind of stimulate you back into cycling um, okay and then if it's like hot sweats, that kind of thing, we have a, a mist called infinite love mist that has, like you said, your rose, which is really cooling. Um, it's kind of softens the temper when, when we get irritable and it is just like naturally cooling. And then there's one other flower that comes to mind and that's the squash blossom. And that is more like along the lines of sensuality and feeling comfortable with our bodies Mm. dissolving any sort of effects of old traumas or sexual abuse and really making our bodies our friends. Oh, I love that. Thank you. And one more before we close our interview. Um, There was, uh, I started following you, your your page on YouTube. Great content there. Um, So for those listening, please make sure you subscribe to her YouTube channel. (laughs) Um, I wanted you to introduce us to the flower essence true strength that one called to me yeah um so true strength is a combination of flower and tree remedies and like if you think of for example redwood tree you know how the redwoods grow in circles they're very community oriented um so you can see the aspects of that in the flowers there's also pink torch ginger which heals old wounds like childhood wounds like maybe 
you know, when our fathers weren't there for us or um, we didn't feel like held um, by the masculine in a certain way that we needed. Um, so it's really like healing all of those old wounds that sort of can affect our everyday life now. Um, and yeah, helping us heal those, whatever that's like in our system around abandonment and being able to feel more supported because it's like stimulating the divine masculine inside of ourselves, right? We have both, mm -hmm. every human being, whether you're man or woman has divine masculine and feminine. The masculine is like the holder, the protector, the strength, the foundation. And, you know, it can, it's like, we have to, we have to get to the point where we're not looking for all the love outside of ourselves. We have to be able to um, hold this, you know, container of strength and, and firmness, solidness that we can lean into as supporting ourselves because too often we're our worst enemies. Yes. You know, like you got the little chatterbox in your mind that's telling you all the worst things. Um, so it's really about flipping that dynamic so that we are our greatest support uh, and that we can feel more interconnected. Thank you for just having such a service out there for the community and for the world. Oh my God. It's such a pleasure. It's not easy being human. Like I'm the first to say, you know, um, I walk my talk. So wow. I'm very human. Yeah. It's an incredible legacy that you're, Aww. um, so what's next for you? Mm. any new new projects well we're starting up our flower lounge tour we used to do these really big events called flower lounges and we're starting mm. them back up this summer um and i think we, yeah phoenix in the fall okay austin, austin miami uh charleston south carolina um before we did the west and east coast and the north and so now we're really focusing on the south and the southeast so we can hit everywhere and we're doing a lot of educating practitioners so that we can scale the impact yes. and always new flower essences and goodies that are yeah. coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I did sign up to your institute. Um, yeah. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so we have uh, an educate like when people are like interested in knowing how do these work and how do they, you know more about the depths of that of it. Um, we have a four part education series. Um, and then there's also just like part of the, the Lotus Way Institute where you can just like jump on and meet other people who are also taking flower essences. Yeah. So, and then also together with the Self Arising Nature Center here in Phoenix, we have a building that's 15,000 square feet. Mm. And so we do events and we have a little store and people can come in and learn about flower essences, uh, like in an education. I do. I do. How do you sign up for that? So you'll find on our website, there should be a services tab and you can just book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with someone in the store and it's, it's, you know, free, but you just make an appointment and then, um, Shay can give you a flower reading and oh. try everything out. And it's, it's really fun. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, so anything else you would like to add or discuss that perhaps we didn't touch on today? Yeah, I guess that sometimes we think we're not making an impact, you know, that we're small or that how there's so many problems in the world. How could we possibly make a dent in it? Yeah. But there was a study in, in Boston that they did, it was for 10 years, and they uh, they came to the conclusion that if you become wildly happy it has more of a beneficial effect on your friend's friend's friend than if someone put five thousand dollars cash in their pocket wow. or if your friend's friend's friend someone you don't even know becomes wildly happy it has more of a beneficial effect on you than if someone put five thousand cash in your pocket mm. so there is this there's a lot more going on than we can see in terms of we're constantly in this very moment impacting others so um why not give yourself the gift of extra support and nourishment from mother nature to be yes. able to expand all of those, you know, positive qualities that we all have. Thank you so much. Um, and again, um, you can connect with um, Katie at noticeway.com. Thank you so much for 
blessing us with your presence and teaching us everything about flowers and please go online and take her task to see what comes up for you. You're so great. It, 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 it was fun. It was fun taking that path. You're such a gracious host. I hope you come in soon to visit us. Yes, I definitely will. You're like 20 minutes from me. I have no excuse. <laughs> no excuse. <laughs> I know. Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you for listening. Please visit the website at www.leveluptribes.com and please subscribe to the podcast and share with your family and friends. Be sure to tune in to our next episode. Catch you all next time, my beloved tribes.